Hey guys, it's Meredith, and today we're going to talk about right heart catheterization. So this is hard because you guys haven't learned about the heart. So first, I'm going to explain a couple simple things. All right, so here's the heart. Bear with me, okay? So you have your right ventricle and your right atrium on the right side, and then you have your left ventricle and your left atrium on the left side. What drains into the right atrium is your IVC, your inferior vena cava, and your SVC, your superior vena cava. And that brings all the um, deoxygenated blood back to your heart. So it went through your body, dropped off the oxygen, and it's coming back and it ends up in the right side of your heart. What happens on the other side is the aorta. So once the blood goes through your lungs and gets oxygenated, it comes out of the left side of your heart and it gets to your body via the aorta. But what happens in between? How does that deoxygenated blood really go through your lung and then end up in the left side of the heart? All right, so the way that the blood gets out of the RV and into the lungs is through what's called the pulmonary artery. From there, the blood travels into the lungs, into the capillary bed, and that's where everything gets oxygenated. And then all that oxygenated blood dumps into the pulmonary veins and the pulmonary veins dump back into the left atrium. So in summary, basically, the blood is in your body, okay? That blood is deoxygenated, dumps into the SVC and the IVC, which then dump into the right atrium and then the right ventricle. From there, it goes through the pulmonary artery, which is the point of our discussion today, and it goes into the lungs and through the capillary beds and gets all oxygenated. It comes back out um, and it goes through the pulmonary veins, which then dump into the left atrium that lead to the left ventricle and then out through the aorta back to your body with oxygenated blood. So what is a right heart catheter? So here's your little patient. It has lungs, it has a heart with a right side and a left side, and then it has this internal jugular vein that goes into the right side of the heart via the SVC. So what we do when we do a right heart cath is we basically put this long catheter through the neck, through the internal jugular vein, down through the SVC into the right side of the heart. So the actual catheter is this long yellow thingy. It has a balloon on the end, and then it has a pressure sensor as well as a temperature sensor. Okay, so basically what happens is you have this catheter. It goes down your SVC into your right atrium, then it passes into the right ventricle, and then basically you float it, opening up this balloon into the pulmonary artery. As you're doing this, you measure the pressures. So you measure the pressure in the RA, pressure in the RV, the pressure at the pulmonary artery, and then the pulmonary artery occlusion pressure. So here's sort of a picture of what these pressures look like. Again, this is just a cartoon drawing showing sort of how the catheter travels through the chambers of the heart and into the pulmonary artery. So let's take a look at these pressures. As you can tell, they're quite different as we move along. So the right atrium has a lower pressure. Then when you look at the right ventricle, um, you see a systolic and a diastolic pressure. The pulmonary artery also has a systolic and diastolic component. And then you have the wedge. So what really is the wedge? So another name for the wedge is the pulmonary artery occlusion pressure. So basically what happens is you get your catheter into position in the pulmonary artery, and then you blow up that balloon that's on the end of the catheter. What that does is it essentially occludes the pulmonary artery for a short amount of time. When you do that, you're getting all of the um, pressure that you're measuring is actually coming from the left side of the heart, if that makes sense. And so this is a way to measure an estimated pressure on the left side of the heart. This is important for the diagnosis of pulmonary hypertension because remember, if the patient has increased pressures on the left side of the heart as well as the right, then that means that the right-sided pressures are probably increased because of something going on on the left side of the heart. So the main pressure you want to be looking at is the pulmonary arterial pressure, as circled here. You see it has a systolic and a diastolic component, and what you want to know is the mean pulmonary artery pressure. So out of all of the things you can measure with the PA catheter, what are the things you need to know? So one, you want to know the mean pulmonary artery pressure, which is one-third of the systolic plus two-thirds of the diastolic. You also want to know the wedge pressure or the pulmonary artery occlusion pressure. And then you want to know the cardiac output, abbreviated as CO. 
So we haven't really talked about cardiac output yet because you haven't done your cardiology module, but just know that there's two ways to measure it. One is by the FIC equation, which essentially uses the um, oxygen saturation in the artery compared to the vein to figure out your cardiac output. And then the other way is by thermodilution, which is why there's a temperature sensor on the pulmonary artery um, catheter. And essentially, you measure the change in temperature in a cardiac cycle, and that's how you get your cardiac output. So the reason that these are the three important numbers to know is because you want to calculate your PVR, your pulmonary vascular resistance. Because remember, the three numbers you need to diagnose pulmonary arterial hypertension are your pulmonary artery pressure, your wedge, and your PVR. So how do you calculate PVR? So PVR is a very simple equation, and essentially what it is is the mean pulmonary artery pressure minus the wedge or the pulmonary arterial occlusion pressure divided by the cardiac output. So now you have all the information you need to make a diagnosis of pulmonary arterial hypertension. Remember, you want a mean PA pressure greater than 20, your wedge to be less than 15, and your PVR to be greater than 3. And that's pulmonary arterial hypertension. So what's the point of the wedge again? So the point of the wedge is we want to differentiate between pre-capillary and post-capillary pulmonary hypertension. So if you have a problem with your LV, like you had a heart attack and now you have heart failure, then it's going to try as hard as it can to pump, but it's going to be backed up, okay? So you're going to get an increase in pressure in that left side of your heart. The increase in pressure in the left ventricle is going to relay that pressure back to the left atrium, which is then going to relay that pressure back towards the pulmonary circulation, which is going to end up at the pulmonary artery. That's where you measure that pulmonary artery occlusion pressure, okay? That pressure then from that point is also relayed into the right side of the heart, increasing the pressures in the RV, the RA, and so on. So in summary, a right heart cath is a procedure we perform to diagnose pulmonary hypertension by measuring the mean pulmonary artery pressure, a wedge pressure, a cardiac output, and calculating a PVR. These numbers are used to both diagnose pulmonary hypertension, but also to distinguish from pre-capillary pulmonary hypertension and post-capillary pulmonary hypertension. So how do we distinguish that? So in general, we say that a wedge pressure less than 15 is going to be pulmonary arterial hypertension, meaning that it's pre-capillary, and that a wedge that is greater than 15 is more consistent with pulmonary venous hypertension, meaning that it's post-capillary. The most common kind of post-capillary pulmonary hypertension is from left-sided heart failure. The final summary point I want to make is just Pulmonary hypertension is tough. It's a tough concept and a tough disease to understand, and it's completely okay if you don't understand it yet. Don't worry. As always, thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you found this helpful. Again, I understand it can be a confusing concept, so if you have any questions at all, please feel free to email me at mkgreer at emory.edu. Happy studying!